So what I'm going to talk about today is subjective value, what something's worth. So this video is for those of you who like economics. So what is something worth? That's the question. And why is it important for society to be able to measure the value of resources, finished products, or maybe even somebody's labour and how much they should get paid? This might seem like a dry, uh, boring, dare I say it, academic matter, but it really is important for the reasons I'll explain in a minute. But safe to say, the people who run our country at the moment have corrupted a system which was designed to work perfectly, and I don't think that that's an accident. So how much is something worth? The simple and correct answer is that something is worth what somebody else is prepared to pay for it. Value is therefore subjective. It's a matter of opinion. But whose opinion counts and why? Take this picture that I've drawn. I might think it's great and worth £10,000. But is it worth what I think it's worth? The answer depends on what other people think. If most people think that it's rubbish and the most somebody's prepared to pay for it is 2p, then that's what it's worth. If my style of art becomes more popular, people will be prepared to pay more for it, and its price will rise relative to other types of art. So, other things being equal, the market price of something tells you something important, which is customer tastes and preferences. Because, again, other things being equal, rising prices will tell you that consumers are valuing the thing that has gone up in price more highly than other things that haven't gone up in price. So prices act as signals. Rising prices indicate that society has decided that the product or resource in question has become more valuable. And falling prices indicate the opposite. This free market method of determining, val determining value, what something is worth, is decentralised and determined by millions of decisions made every day by thousands of individuals casting their spending votes in a daily economic election. Privately owned firms react to price signals out of self-interest. Rising prices tell firms that they should be producing more of what's risen in price because that's what consumers want more want more of firms react to falling prices by doing the opposite by cutting production or maybe even by withdrawing from that particular market in response to a change in consumer tastes away from that product in question so the price system ensures the following things First off, that firms produce the type of products consumers want. On the other hand, firms that waste resources by producing things that we, the people, don't want, go bust. That's a good thing. So it ensures that resources are used to satisfy what we want. Number two, people are rewarded according to their ability to please and improve the lives of others. For example, my art won't earn me a living because it's not sufficiently valued by others. Is this a bad thing? I would say no. And finally, this system ensures that we all have an incentive to look outwards beyond ourselves and serve one another. Our society isn't functioning properly at the moment because we've abandoned this system based on subjective value. What I think is happening is that we're moving rapidly towards a technocratic system where the government determines what something is worth. In some markets, the government sets prices by decree, by diktat. For example, we now have price caps in the market for energy and minimum wages determining what labour is worth in many situations. And you could call this interference price propaganda. Other examples of price propaganda include subsidies for inefficient green energy 
that's expensive and unreliable and taxes levied on consumers and businesses which distort decision making. A good example is what's happened to pubs. A pub's closing down because we've fallen out of love with the pub or a pub's closing down due to the tax system which favours the supermarkets. For me, there's, there's no question there about what's actually happened. Socialists, communists, fascists and other authoritarians believe that the government needs to set prices or interfere with the price mechanism to stop some people from being exploited by others. A good example is my son. Before we left England back in 2020, he had a part-time job working in a fish and chip shop. He was 15 years old at the time and was paid £5 an hour or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it wasn't a great wage by, by many people's standards. But it wasn't bad for a 15-year-old. However, some people, like socialists or whatever, they would say, people that worship government, they'd say that... Um, he was being exploited by, by the person that ran the fish and chip shop. Now, I disagree with this assessment for the following reason. Nobody forced my son to work for the owner of the fish and chip shop. He chose to uh, go out and work for him of his own free will. Presumably, this was because the wage he received was worth more to him, that's my son, than the value of the leisure time he gave up in order to do the work. Similarly, the chip shop owner also benefited from hiring my son. He must have done, otherwise he wouldn't have hired him. From his perspective, the value of my son's labour to him must have been worth more than the wages he paid to my son. So if you boil all of this down, both parties, that is my son and the fish and chip shop owner, benefited. My son, well, he benefited because he got money and valuable work experience for working in a fish and chip shop. And his, his boss uh, got to benefit from hiring a bright and hard-working 15-year-old. So this is a, a classic case in point in that in the free market, nobody can be exploited because all exchange is voluntary. Therefore, in order for it to take place, it must be mutually beneficial, i.e. it must benefit both the, the buyer and the seller. In this case, the buyer of my son's labour was a fish and chip shop owner and the seller of his labour was himself. If, it must be mutually beneficial because if one party feels exploited, the exploitation just ends immediately because the exploited party withdraws from the exchange. So just to, to add a little bit more detail onto this, um, in Finland in last summer, he worked for a well-known uh, burger chain uh, here in Pori. And um, he, didn't, he thought he was being exploited. You know, the wage that he was paying him uh, was uh, too low relative to um, what he was asked to do and um, just the, the anti-social working hours. So um, my son felt he was being exploited. So guess what he did? He stopped working for this burger chain and got another job. So this just shows you again this kind of uh, socialist fallacy of exploitation. In a free market, all exchange is voluntary. Therefore, by definition, exploitation can't take place. Now, unfortunately, I think we've been moving rapidly away from this system based on uh, individual freedom and choice um, as the government's been expanding and it's, be, it's be gradually it's becoming more and more dictatorial in its ways now the thing that you know people don't grasp is that unlike the private sector where exchange is voluntary when we the citizens interact with the government we don't get a choice transactions between the government and its people are never voluntary uh, rather, they're coerced or just outright enforced. So a good example is, is when I lived in Guildford. I was obliged by law to pay £2,000 a year to the council uh, in council tax. This was supposed to pay for local services like refuse collection 
and repairing the roads. Now, according to my own subjective assessment of value, in this case, the value of the services supplied by Waverley Council, I was being badly exploited by this, this arrangement. I wasn't getting value for money. And this was because I valued my £2,000 that I earned far more highly than the value of the services that the council supplied. So I was being ripped off. My £2,000 was worth more to me than the services that the council supplied. A good example uh, was like refuse collection. The council only emptied the bins uh, twice uh, a month and even then they couldn't do it properly, properly because half the time um, they either didn't turn up or when they did turn up rubbish was just strewn around on my drive. More of it went on the, on the driveway than it went into the, the uh, refuse collection truck. Unlike a private transaction based on free will, I wasn't allowed to end the exploitation by withdrawing from the contract with uh, Waverley, Waverley Council. If I had tried to do that, I would, I would have eventually been hauled off to jail by thugs wielding big sticks for non-payment of council tax. You know, if I would have just said to them, oh dear Waverley Council, I don't think I'm getting value for money from my £2,000 a year council tax. Um, please, can, um, can I um, suspend this arrangement with you? It's not like a private contract, like cancelling Sky Sports. This is compelled. This is what happens when the state gets involved with its citizens. Any free will goes out of the window, and it's all about compulsion. So another example of an enforced transaction between individuals and the state happened very recently and relates to a medical treatment that we can't even talk about now where we were obliged to pay for this treatment with our taxes whether we wanted the treatment or not. So some conclusions then. So the first one is that we're moving rapidly away from an economic system where we decide where we decide what something is worth towards a system where government decides what something is worth and that's imposed on us that that valuation the second thing is that the government has been fixing prices and or using price propaganda to shift the output uh, mix of the economy away from producing what we want towards producing what they want they being the government the third conclusion to draw is that uh, we're seeing a decline in freedom. There's a clear link between economic freedom and political freedom. History's full of it. When you lose economic freedom, political freedom tends to go as well. A good example, again, is the medical treatment we didn't want, but we were obliged to pay for anyway. Is it a surprise that the government has stopped us from even talking about this medical treatment? I'd say it's not a surprise at all. One follows the other. You lose economic freedom, you very quickly lose political freedom. And the last thing is we need to stop worshipping the state and revert back to a system where we, the people, determine what something is worth rather than relying on the government. So I hope you've enjoyed that and you've got something from it. I know that I'm going to get some flack in the comments from people who are Marxists who don't even realise that they're Marxists. You know, such is the degree to which they've been programmed uh, into Marxism at school and university, you know. Uh, these, these people, one, one thing that I will pick up on is um, before, they, before they even write about it in the comments is we're all supposed to be here to use our, our talents to serve other people. We're not here to serve the government. Some people are more talented than others. Um, others have got talents in different areas that, that we maybe subjectively value less. That's just life and we have, to, we have to kind of suck that up or develop new talents. What can't happen in a society is what we've got now with government, where the government uses taxation to take money away from people, and there's no choice about that. It's either that, you pay your taxes or you go to jail, 
and then politicians then use that money and redistribute it to other people who've got no other abiding quality other than that they're loyal vo voters for the for the party that has, has taken taxes away from other people and promised to spend it on them. If you have that, the whole thing collapses. People, you just have a massive disincentive to work and you have huge corruption because politicians will try to garner more and more votes by, by basically coming up with manifestos that involve stealing money from an ever decreasing amount of wealth creators and that's basically what's been happening over 30 years and uh, if I want to help somebody that should, up, sh that should be up to me that should be a free choice it shouldn't be through like organised mafia you know through the government the government deciding which people in society which groups in society I'm going to help well it's not even help is it because help implies a free choice and with taxation there is no free choice so yeah as a Christian I believe in helping other people but it should be up to me to decide which people I decide to help, which people are worthy of my help, and which people are not worthy of my help. For example, um, I don't know, just off the top of my head, I would be um, in favour of helping people who've, been, um, who've paid taxes into the system before other people who've just arrived in Britain who were being put up in four-star hotels. But, you know, the current system that we've got now, there's no way that we can have any influence over that system because whichever party we elect, they all do the same thing because they've, they're, 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 all the parties are owned by the same group of um, big corporations. You know, we determine value, as I've been trying to say, through our own choices, free choices made in the free market. So... Um, yeah, that's that's all that I want to say. Um, what's the solution to this? Well, we need to move. We need. We're not going to solve this problem by changing one government for another. We need to radically rethink society and how we organise ourselves economically, and move away from coercion and the government towards um, voluntary voluntarism, where we decide what we're going to do for a living. We decide what we're going to do, and then we decide how we're going to spend the money that we've earned helping others. And, and that's the system that, that God intended for us. Uh, God created us with free will. Uh, he didn't want us to worship false gods like mummy government. And um, we've been going down that path and we need to move away from it. So that's all I want to say today. So God bless.